everybody who's slipping on into the stream. We are going live here in just a moment or two. Really nice to see some members coming back who are always in these streams. See those repeat viewers. Your dedication is appreciated. You guys want to start off with our, our trailer? Does that seem like fun? You want to get right into the gameplay. What do you think? Trailer, gameplay. What do you want? Yes? Okay, let's do it. Goodness, what a delightful little thing. Of course, with the one caveat that it says December. Oh my goodness, we changed that for those of you who don't know. But first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. And I, I, I know things. So this is a very strong opportunity for you to ask me questions in the general sense for Rockfish Games or the detailed sense for Everspace 2. Much like I just mentioned, that trailer says December 2020 for our early access released. We had an announcement last week, so let's just bridge right into this. We had an announcement last week where we've adjusted that timeline schedule. This was largely in due part of Cyberpunk 2077's change of their dates. And because we are an indie team and we wanna make sure that we have presence on the map, we also had to adjust ours as well. So uh, if you want to know more about those details, we actually released a second Kickstarter update. We snuck one in, whoop, right under the radar. I really do encourage you to go in there to see more details. Obviously, if you want those additional details, we are more than happy to help answer and uh, all that type of stuff as well. Mike is desynced, uh-oh, uh-oh, hang on. Let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can resync it. One moment. We'll, we'll see if this works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't.
Test. Okay, sounds back. That's good. Oh my goodness. Now the question is, is it synced? Is my mouth moving at the same rate of the sounds? Because if it's not at this point, I don't even care. We're still going with the stream. Sorry if it's not. Oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. It's synced? Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Okay, so where are we? What are we doing? Well, we are flying in Everspace 2's beta. And we are in an event where we have to find a hidden stash. I believe this is actually the exact same point we left off in the stream uh, last week. So we are still in the late game uh, components of the, uh, the closed beta, but more so to that point of what we're doing in the game. This is obviously to showcase certain things, talk about certain things, guide you through what it is that we are in fact doing. But the main point of these streams is always having a very direct line of communication so you guys know what's going on. So if you have development questions, if you have personal questions, maybe not maybe not like super personal, okay? But like if you have like thoughts, you've got the feels, this is that space to provide that. These are community-centric streams. The focus is on you. So by all means, please, please utilize this, all right? It would make me sad if you didn't. Did you update the engine section of the ship? Uh, no. Um, no. So this is just, um, this, I, I believe this was the exact same engine that we had last time. If it's not, well, you know, oops. Oh goodness, what what happened? I guess we'll just change ships. But no, uh, the engine sections were not modified. I think the most recent section that was modified were actually the bodies of the ships and the, the middle class, uh, the, the medium class, there we go. The medium class ships, there were added detail work, uh, a lot of added detail work on those. So you can even see like these parts here, for example. Um, but that was before the beta launched, I believe. So nice little updates to that. Otherwise, the details on ships right now are going through the gunship. Whoa! Oh my gosh, what? And before anybody asks, I'm too late, somebody already asked. Somebody asked, is the gunship ready yet? No, the gunship is not ready yet. Uh, we are hard at work to bring it all together for you all. Um, but just like we said in the Kickstarter, the plan is to have a gunship ready uh, for that early access. So we'll see uh, We'll see how things come together. Um, I can tell you that the progress has been, uh, it's, it's been good, it's been good. But it's also one of those processes where we can't really like have you be a part of it because it'd be kind of weird and you know, I know some people are like, oh, I want to see blockouts, do it. We actually showed gunship blockouts, believe it or not, um, some time back. Uh, that was a, that was a long time back, and those those processes are getting fleshed out thoroughly to having that high quality visual aspect that you know and love from Rockfish Games. Like, hmm, beautiful. All right, so let's grab this power core. And I believe we we did this exact thing in the last stream, so I'm just gonna do this really quick. What am I doing, you might be asking? Well, every location has what's called a local event. And a local event is a small task, maybe it's a large task, depending on where you're at, to where you have to complete an event in the local space. Wow, mind blown, right? So for us, we got some poultry rewards, but the event has been cataloged and is now considered completed. Now on this map in the beta, there's just this little dot in comparison to these big dots. Just a really quick update regarding the UI, so you're aware of that as well. Basically, this little dot represents a small area that you would go and visit. These are gonna all have various tasks for you to accomplish, much like we just did there. And then your large areas are the ones that were much more full. These large areas are much more fleshed out. There's a lot more content. There's going to be more quest related uh, specifics in these locations as well. So um, in each given location on the world map, if you will, if you want to call this a world map, there's probably about 10 big areas per location. And then there's a lot of dotted little locations. Now, something that we've actually updated since this beta and what you'll see in the next one, gosh dang it, green screen, don't do this. Don't do this to me. All right. Um, one of the things that we've updated 
is that now whenever you complete the tasks within a smaller area, it'll actually have a check mark on the map. So you know, hey, I've done the deed in this area. Everything has been accomplished. I technically don't have to go back here if I don't want to. Now you still can because locations that you've been to and you have left and returned to will repopulate with their findings. So that means resources can spawn back up, enemy types can spawn back up, allies can spawn back up. And though there might be some other hidden variables that could be, that could change what sort of things can reoccur in a location that you visited based on the decisions that you've made and who you've helped. So that's that's something that we've been really adamant on working on, just making sure that the UI is crystal clear on the map. There's a lot of stuff going on here. We recognize that. We have an outstanding UI designer, UX designer, and we are using every opportunity we can to make sure the systems work. Uh, this also comes into play even with like the, the targeting of ships, because you know, we've, we've gotten a lot of, we've had like, we've got thoughts on how all of this works. This is by no means finalized. There are still little adjustments here and there happening. So what you see here, what you see present right now could very well be adjusted for early access come January. A lot of shifting and moving parts. Let me tell you what, guys. It's it's pretty wild what can all change. All right. So that was just a little side area right there. Completed the base mission. So now we can go to uh, a new location, do some jobs if we wanna do that. Uh, but I also wanna make sure that you guys know, and I'm gonna say it a billion times if I have to, that this is your chance to start. So if any of you, for example, wanted to, uh, wanted to talk about, hang on a second, I wanna make sure, you guys can still hear me, right? I certainly hope so. But if you guys wanted to talk about any specific sub subject matter, or if you wanted me to go to a specific area, I'm all for doing that. It was gone for two to three seconds, oh boy. Well, better not do that anymore. Yeah, I think the reason why I had an audio desync is because... Uh-oh, can you not hear me anymore? Oh no. Um, but the reason I had an audio desync is because my audio driver was like, hey, can I update? <laughs> Perfect time, right before stream? Yeah, sure, Windows, let's update. Oh my goodness. All right. We're just gonna head over to the Ulcer for now. See what's on those ships. GMB Mining Fields, wonderful. All right, so. Here's a question, can we win today a key? No, I don't believe so, unless Michael somehow sneaks something in. But no, we are not distributing keys today. Today is a wonderful day to answer all of the questions that you have. We still know that there's some people up in the air about like our move, for example, with early access. And uh, you know, if that's the case, you know, put your thoughts down, that's that's fine. Uh, just know that we are very finalized in our approach. Like we are very, we understand what we're doing quite well. Um, we have some expert marketeers. Can we, can we use that term marketeers? Oh gosh. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna take out these foes in the area. Elites are back. Some of you have seen these, some of you haven't. And some of you know that we've discussed in part that there might be um, other factors in place with elite types now. So, for example, when we start taking this guy out, you'll notice he just gained a bunch of armor. That means that he has some sort of special power on him. He's not just an elite, which means, oh, he's gonna be stronger. He's got, he has a statistical increase, therefore he's better. No, okay, nay I say to thee. Let me tell you, let me drop some deeds right now, okay? I do not stand for stat increases to clarify the difficulty of a game, all right? I just, I don't, okay? This is me from a personal standpoint, all right? And I have had a great many conversation within our development team to ensure that what we do for Everspace 2 isn't just stat increases, because that's a bunch of bull. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm being like, I'm being really subjective right now. Okay, I want to, I want to be clear there. But that's just not, that's not how I work personally. Okay, and we want to make sure that if there's an enemy that has some sort of 
effect or modifier or unique property that it truly is some type of an effect or modifier or unique property. All right, that's that's just that's the that's that that's it. <laughs> that's what we're sticking to. So we'll see what we end up doing with uh, additional enemy types. But elites are absolutely back and they are more fierce than ever. Even if it is just a matter of they can boost their armor in the heat of the moment. Man, I actually I really enjoy the ulcer here. This uh this site gives me the feels with how our teams put this together. Um, the light source, it just feels nice in this almost, I wanna use the word whimsical, but that's not the right word. Mysterious? You have these, th this, you know, space dust that's red that emblazons this location. That's just a mining outfit for GMB. And the thematic approach that we're utilizing through all of Everspace 2 is we want to make sure that you can tell where you are just by the style alone. Uh, this is also something we did with Everspace 1. And we are, we're really happy with how it's coming together, especially for Union. Union is going to be the second system that you will see when early access drops. So pretty happy. Yeah, and I will definitely show cockpit view uh, here in a bit. Yeah, for sure. So everything's been pairing up pretty well for us. We want to make sure that they have these distinct styles, um, solid presence for you to uh, be embraced by the world and what it has to offer. Now, this is probably going to lo uh, load quite a bit here. I'm telling you that straight up because there is actually a, a little bit of a bug in this version that I am playing right now. We have since rectified it. Uh, but it's in a version that I can't show because there's a lot of moving pieces. That should actually incite you, by the way. When you see the, the closed beta number in the upper left of this screen, like all the way up there, and you see that it's the same build that you guys have access to, that should be exciting. I know some of you are thinking, well, how's that exciting? That means that you're showing us stuff we've already seen. Well, yes, but it also means that I can't use the current version because there are bonus assets that are heavily in the process of being worked on that will be shown soon TM. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go explore in this asteroid because I see something going on. I want to know more. And let's also answer a couple questions. Torben is in the stream. Hello there. Soundtrack will be DMCA free, yes. Yeah, and that's... Uh, trailer music is licensed. So trailer music, uh, no. Game music, uh, yes. Hello everyone, Rockfish guys, you are the best. Oh, stop it. I really liked the first game, even though it had weak roguelike part. Oh, snap. And hope second one will be great. Me and my friends are waiting. CP77 anyway got delayed. Well, excellent. I am glad that you have opinions and thoughts because that's exactly what we need through an early access phase of the game. Wonderful. Also, check out this cockpit view. I know somebody was wondering. We're going to be very gentle and navigating up to the shipwreck. I just need to get... There we go. What's on here? We have some iron plateage. We have this container. What do we got? Some credits? All right, we'll take some credits. And then we're just going to nope on out of here because we, we really don't want to deal with uh, anything else going on. Looks like these hydras might be uh, creating some sort of trap, and that's what happened to this ship. Kind of hard to say. But yeah, we do have uh, full cockpit support, and this will be the case for all of the different types of ships. Um, you might see some similarities within the same class of ship, but otherwise, uh, the different classes themselves, their cockpits are completely different. Uh, this is very much in line of what you're familiar with with Everspace 1, especially, whereas your, your scout, your interceptor, your gunship, and your sentinel, they all had a distinct interior look, right? So here we very much want to do that as well. And that look can also change. Let me make sure I hit the right button here. Nope, that's the wrong button. Here we go. That look can also change depending on where your cockpit is situated. So you might be wondering, well, how did my weapons get out in front of me here? And now they're like below me? Well, that's because I'm pushing a, a, a dev command right now that literally changes 
where your cockpit is situated, right? So when we are um, when we are changing the location of that cockpit, it literally changes the location of where you see out of it, right? So it could be on the top of the ship, like this, or it could be on the front of the ship, like this, right? And then there's a mixture of, you know, some other ones. And so, like, if we have this one that's hanging all the way down low, yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to see your guns in front of you. And that, that changes. This is, again, unique for all of the different types of classes of ships. So with that sweet, sweet gunship that's coming, you're going to have a new internal look. And it's going to have a different feel based on the size and the scope of that gunship itself. All right. Beautiful. Those guns following the targeting. I know, right? Isn't that nice? Woo, woo, woo. Mm, mm. And also, I mean, you know, I think it's also kind of fun that there's actually a different model for the different weapons here too. So like the, the thermo gun, you can see its model. You can see the beam laser. You can see its model. They are different. Maybe not the the craziest sort of thing. It's like not a selling point. It's like, oh my gosh, they have custom models for every weapon. I mean, you know, whatever. But uh, but somebody who's super cheeky in their screenshot taking, like you're gonna you're gonna see what type of weapon somebody has based on the screenshot alone. Like you can you can tell that. There's gonna be some super dork out there who's gonna be like, that's a beam laser. That's a flat cannon. That's this other thing. It's, it's gonna be great. I love it. Okay, so let's go to Nefty's Plains. This is a location that we go to a lot during these streams. Um, it's a ground location, so it's a lot of fun to go visit. Uh, but even more importantly, it is the only location that offers jobs. And that's the main reason why we're going here. It's always fun to fly out to this site because it's near this moon and this planet. It's delightful makes me smile. Black's Motive, we do not have gunship gameplay scheduled this stream. That implies there's a stream with scheduled gunship play. Well, I, I didn't say that necessarily. Uh, but no, this this stream, we are focused in a the specific build that is available to everyone. We can talk a little bit about the gunship if you want to, since there have been screenshots shown. Um, but otherwise, no, no gunship play here. Disco cockpit mode, right? Yeah, and I, I love how you're commenting on the level of detail, especially in the in the cockpits, because this isn't done yet. Um, the 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 what do you want to call it? The joysticks. Those are placeholders. The areas around the ship itself, like there's more that can be done here. The cockpit glass itself. Maybe there's something to be said about that as well. I don't know. Who knows what's coming next? Oh my goodness. Can you explore the planet to a degree? Yes. There is another location on this particular planet, yes. So um, the way that the locations work, just to nip this in the bud really quick, all the locations in Everspace 2 are handcrafted by humans. Oh my gosh, that's right. We actually have humans on Rockfish Games team. I know it's mind boggling for sure, but with that, that means that the level design, the layout of these planets, or even in space locations, there's intentionality behind every block that's placed. Every asteroid that's smashed into a station and every piece of debris that's out there floating around, it's intentionally placed there. This means that it's going to give you tremendous opportunities through exploration because now we can hide stuff, legitimately hide stuff without some sort of procedural generation thing, just randomly place things, right? Um, now, that's not to say we aren't using procedural generation at all. There are some aspects of that that can come in useful, especially for repopulating locations, for example. But just know that like, there are specific locations that you can find certain devices to upgrade your ship. There might be specific locations for other unique things that you could acquire. Woo! That was vague enough that it's also implying something. Woo! All right. 
Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot to that. Um, and so on these planet side locations, what I'm getting at in the whole conversation here is that these planet side locations, like you can see way off in the distance, you can see those mountains, that there's more of the station, of course. Um, there's a huge drill back over there. Um, everywhere on this planet you see, it's not like you can just go and do whatever you want. There is also an enclosure of this space that is navigatable that you can explore. And that is because we want you to explore all of the details that we've put in place here to its fullest. If we were to handcraft entire planets in this game, um, we would not be releasing this game for a while since, you know, even the Cedo system alone, we have one, two, three, four planets. Um, and that's not including all of the other planets in all of these other systems. So that would be a lot of work to go through every single planet, which is why we make these pocketed areas that have meaningful design and direction for you to participate in. So let's just talk a little bit more about that and show you, um, hope, I can't remember if I've collected this here or not. I think I may have, but just one little uh, location to kind of show an example of. If you take the time and you're like, oh, well there's, there's this big old hill over here and as you're traveling around well this looks a little suspicious there's like some sort of rubble over there well that's that's interesting well let's go check that out so we fly over yonder and we decide oh you know what there's there's like a little cave structure here and there's a shipwreck inside okay well let's let's navigate inside of here ah okay so it looks like it's booby trapped A little bit better and we'll see what's in this shipwreck here well look at that we have a missile defense system again this is very intentionally placed by our designers by our uh, developers so that you are rewarded for this particular thing if you choose to go explore this isn't the only location of a missile defense system in fact i already have it but if you already have something and then you find it, um, as of right now, you get credits equivalent to its cost. Um, that's probably gonna change since it's a little bit broken regarding balance, but uh, you get the picture. You are rewarded if you take the time to seek various locations out. Beautiful. So can you fly to a mountain? Uh, the mountains in this particular area, like, we could, we could fly up pretty high. But, uh, regard here, let's flip over so that we can kind of look down. I know it's going to be a little bit upside down, uh, maybe hard to interpret. But, like, all those mountains, like, all the way back there. Yeah, we can see a lot more here. Like, all those mountains all the way in the back. Probably can't get to most of those. Um, if you want to know what happens when you reach the outskirts, I mean, shoot, let's just do that once. So you're kind of aware. But the main focus in this location is the mining area. And then there are sites that are around it that you can benefit from exploring too. So like right here, for example, there's another cave. See you later, punks. But say we wanted to get to this mountain. This is what's going to happen. Whoop. There you go. So there are boundaries, very intentionally set up, <clears throat> so that you can see the material that we placed intentionally. Okay, so now let's head back to this base. We're gonna sell some stuff. Windshield wipers and zebra striped fuzzy dice. Oh my goodness, Jay Noel. I like it, that's fun. Yeah, we haven't fully revealed our cosmetic options yet. A lot of people have noted that, you know, the, the modular ship design, of course, that's a, that's a big deal. I've already been cycling through the ship options, right? Um, <clears throat> like the wings, the body, the cockpit, the engines, like all of these can be different, which make up your ship as a whole. But there's, there's a lot more there um, that we'll be providing in the future. A lot more, a lot more. Okay, so we're gonna sell this stuff, so hopefully the game doesn't lag up. That would be appreciated game. Perfect, nice, good, wonderful. Now, as I did say, we've already changed the backend systems of how 
um, the inventory works. So the lag is like, it's, it's like gone in our next version. So that's, that's going to be a non-issue. Um, okay. So, um, let's just look at some job opportunities. I think we were doing some GMB defense last time, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it looks like we were doing GMB tra uh, trading the most. And we haven't collected our rewards yet. We'll get on that. So if we're doing more trading, let's look for more jobs where we can increase the trading aspect of GMB. So we have three different factions in this version of the game as of right now, and they're effectively sub-factions of Gradient Brunt Prospects, which is a mining corporation, conglomerate, if you will, that's way out here uh, in the DMZ. So depending on who you assist or who you combat, <clears throat> your reputation will fluctuate, your standing, as it is called. So let's see, acquisition of goods, we have 10 clothing. Oh my gosh, didn't we just get clothing? Ha! Nice, we just earned clothing from them and they're like, hey, we need some clothing. I got you, fam. All right, perfect. <laughs> Excellent, so let's see what else we can do. Uh, 20 mining equipment, that's probably gonna be a little hard to do. Um, so these trading missions also, I think it's, it's kind of interesting. They're probably the hardest ones to complete as of right now because we haven't implemented trading lanes yet. What? You're gonna have trading lanes incorporated into the game? Yes, we will be incorporating trading lanes into the game. What does that mean? It means, well, it, it means a lot of things, a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but time will show you how that will be changing up your routes between stations and what you can do between those stations and also what happens to your reputation depending on your actions. So there's still a lot more coming that even the already available jobs will gain some additional modifiers to. Through this whole process, my goodness. We're gonna pick up a generic minesweeper because they're easy enough. And then a search and destroy. Oh my gosh, job limit reached. Job limit reached. Okay, that's fine. We'll get rid of minesweeper. Abandoned. And we'll do another search and destroy. But I think first I have to launch and then do this because you know it is a beta all right there we go so now we've picked up these new jobs we've cleaned out inventory now we can go do some stuff Elite enemies, is there a way to know what's their special ability? Like some kind of cool scanner or ability that tells you what an enemy can do? Or the only way to know to face it directly? That is a great question. And I love how that's something that you desire to know. Um, I think if we were doing this in another roguelike capacity, then it would be something where you have to figure it out on your own. But because this is an open world where you can gather certain resources and increase your knowledge, um, through technology as well, I think that we will very likely have other means to discover those abilities. But we'll have more to talk about on what those abilities look like and how you can discover what they are uh, in the future. That is, uh, that's something that's sensitive. <laughs> The place for devices may change from beta to e early access, right? Says Camofloro. Yeah, actually, it's they, they've already changed uh, in part from the, <laughs> the live beta to the version that we've kind of been experimenting with, just because there are some places that need to have their locations changed. They just, they simply do. Calling Nefty's station. You are speaking to Nefty's station. I finished the job. Good. I want my payment. Signature is fine. Here you go. I also wanted to respond, um, or rather address a question about bobbleheads. Uh, Michael has stated it in the Twitch chat for all those on YouTube who are also wondering this question. Um, you know, cockpit customization, it seems to be a, a fairly popular trend whenever you have, you know, a, a sweet view like this, right? Maybe you wanna 
You want to put like a little dinosaur figurine down at your feet. I don't know, whatever. Sure, like use your imagination what you want to do here. Our customization as a whole and how we are designing Everspace 2, like our philosophy is functionality first, okay? And then on top of that, then it just has to look cool, right? Um, and then third, after all of that, then it's like the crazy factor. And when we look at this ship right here, right now, something that's very important to note is that there's actually going to be functionality towards these different parts and pieces that make up the ship, okay? And while I can't show you the variation, you guys may have seen in a previous vlog from some time back that these bars on the cockpit can also be in different positions, okay? So there is, there is going to be customization within the cockpit, but it is going to have more of that functional effect uh, as a whole, as opposed to just going crazy. Are bobbleheads possible? They are, but it's 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 hard to validate that in, in, in a space game where the majority of our viewers are probably gonna be playing in third person mode. I'm just being realistic here. As well as the fact that their aesthetic could actually be more distracting than engaging within a first person mode. So there are a lot of decisions that we would we have been making, a lot of questions that we've been asking internally of what that customization looks like and does for the player. And bobbleheads are not actually a popular idea of customization. Again, we have strong concepts of customizing the cockpit, okay? Very strong ideas, but it's not in the sense of these crazy little trinkets and, and parts and pieces, okay? So I just want to clarify that. Let's take a peek at gunships. Peter. <laughs> I can show you some screenshots that we revealed last week. Um, that's for sure. Captain Richard says, I love first person mode. Well, that's great. I am certainly glad you do. And that also makes sense with your uh, space sim enthusiasm, shall we say it? <laughs> but yeah, no, that's solid. Let's also go to another mission. So let's see uh, what else. Oops, wrong button. Let's do this search and destroy. Let's blow some stuff up. Preferably not fly into the star. No fuzzy dice, no sail. Oh, well, uh... Sorry, man. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm going to be real here. Like, if you're buying a space game because it has fuzzy dice, I kind of question your judgment there a little bit. <laughs> Obviously, I know you're messing, but... Uh... <laughs> Man, we got we have some first person view gang in here. That's nice. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, obviously we wouldn't be putting that much attention to the uh, to the cockpit if we didn't think you guys were out there. So we're really happy with the results that we have thus far. And again, like there's going to be unique cockpit interiors go. for the different types of ships. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna smile. I'm just gonna smile. That's that's all we can do. <laughs> Excellent. I'm a big fan of the thermal gun in Everspace 2. Um, I feel like it just strikes a really nice balance this time around. Excellent. So in all of these jobs, these areas that we are flying in, this is in part to some of the procedural generation. We still are handcrafting these random sites you can go to, but sometimes the resources that you find or the wreckage that's there, or even the enemies that spawn, those can be dependent on a number of gathered factors that generate the area for you.
Oh, that's not gonna do anything without armor. Oh my gosh, we need a different weapon. This weapon combination's not good against armored foes. Here, let's just disable him for a moment. To clean things up. Excellent. Settled. Okay, good. Upper deposit. We'll take that. Mining is also one of those features that we want to make sure is meaningful to certain types of players. Yes, again, the focus is a fast-paced arcadey uh, combat looter shooter. But we are honoring some space sim elements and mining is no different. We have revealed and we will be working on uh, more systems in place for better mining tools. And the form of a mini game is something that we are, are currently working on. So that you can become more skillful at obtaining resources, if that's the path that you would like to go in. This might also be important to those of you who like really enjoy crafting. As we talked about last week with the crafting systems we have on the table, it is to honor and to complement your direction of gathering resources and tools to better outfit yourself when RNG says no. So if you're frustrated with finding that one item 50 times, you're like, dang it, I hate coil guns. Why have I found so many of them? Now you can say, screw that noise. I am instead going to craft these or break these coil guns down and I'm going to reconstruct this handy dandy. What is it that you want? I don't, I don't know what you want. Handy dandy this thing. That's what you want. Boom. Now RNG, even though it's been denying you, you're like, no, I'm making my own RNG. That's how we're utilizing the crafting system in a lot of ways. It's to rebalance that structure. And of course, there's going to be much more to be had there if you are obtaining a vast assortment of resources that give you more access to those crafting options and maybe even upgrading your uh, crafting paths. I don't know. Beautiful. All right, let's see what else we can find. We've got... Uh, Oh, we need to claim the rewards here. Perfect. So that one had independent rewards. Some of these, I should actually explain these jobs a little bit more. I'm, I'm click happy because I just want to like do, whew, I get so excited sometimes. So every job that you take on lists out at rewards like right above my head here, right? So you have experience to gain, credits to gain, and then sometimes there are items themselves. So in that last job that we just did, we ended up getting, uh, what was it? Mining equipment. Oh, dang it. <laughs> we could have done that other trader job, but uh, we ended up getting mining equipment. <sighs> now, these other two, they're just experience and credits. That's okay, though. We'll go ahead and do it anyway. And hopefully this one's um, a site that can show some of these mini games inside of the jobs as well. That planet with rings has no location around it. Is the system considered finished or not yet? So actually, the, I can very clearly say that the system that we're currently flying in, even though this is Cedo, you've seen this before multiple times, it's not done. And um, even from like the map perspective, like you see this Palamon's wound here, this planet has changed, e even the imagery right here, like you can see that the planet doesn't match up with the planet that's now implemented in the beta. This planet's changed, I think, three times. And even so, the graphic that's literally on the map is not correct. A keen eye will even note that that planet is the same planet as this, which is the same planet as this, which is the same planet as this. Like, they're all the exact same planet. So no, we're still updating all of the assets and how the visual style is going to look within this system. It's still a work in progress. Now, that being said, we do have a strong focus in Union right now. So a lot of this is coming together for you guys to see uh, from a visual standpoint. Because we've only shown like, what, two or three, I guess four, four locations, three locations. We've shown about three locations in Union and it's vastly different than what you see here in Cedo. So there's a lot more of that coming. A lot more of that stuff coming. Here's a big question. Do you have any plans of some type of enemy codex? Yes. Yeah. With part of the lore, absolutely. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yup. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm a lore junkie myself, so I really appreciate that question. Strange Russ. Sincerely, like, I, uh, I do not thrive in games or in storytelling in general when the characters and the established world don't connect. Like, if, if it doesn't make sense, then I've, I, I'm like, I get upset, okay? I, get, I will fully admit, like, it, it frustrates me and it makes me uninterested in that story that's being told about those characters that don't fit in that world. And we at Rockfish Games, like, we have been very diligent about maintaining the lore we've established in Everspace 1, uh, utilizing a codex there, by the way, and making sure that everything we do in Everspace 2 is honoring those systems and the world that we have established. If something is new and different, we need to clarify why it is, because we know that there are some super crazy dedicated fans out there who know that a hive is specifically bound to a clone pilot. So there's no reason why a clone and a hive would be separated, because that means that the hive, as part of the Eterna network for the colonials, would be a captured militarized asset, and that would be terrible. That would absolutely be awful. So you would have to have a very specific reason why, for example, you could find a hive unit somewhere else. But the chances of doing that, the chances of finding a hive unit, I mean, that's basically slim to none, if we're being honest. So there's, there are those types of details. And for those of you who are just like, wow, he really nerded it out there for a second. Yeah, because we're dedicated about our lore, damn it. It's important. <laughs> it's important that it comes together and it makes sense. So... Yeah, so we are very thoughtful about that. And we want to make sure that the enemy types that you're fighting, um, you know, you you have a thorough understanding of what they offer you in the heat of battle, um, the equipment that you're finding. We want to make sure that you understand how that's going to change um, your play style, how the devices you use can uh, modify or better your situation or worsen it. Uh, same thing with the ships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a, there's a lot of details here, and we want to make sure that we help you out in that sense. So yeah, there, there will be a codex. <laughs> Ooh, was, those are some nice goods. Let's try and... Uh... Beautiful! Oh my gosh, throwing that guy into an asteroid felt great. Mm, I love... I love this thruster mod. Somebody's wondering, wait, how did you do that with a boost? That doesn't make any sense. Well, yes, but no. So the devices actually have modes to them, okay? So each one of these modes gives a special ability for a use of that device. So I am using the high pressure energized boost, which effectively makes me use it for ramming. It's my favorite. <laughs> So that's why you just saw what you did. And if you don't like a ramming style, if you're like, nah, I don't want to get up close and personal like that, that's not my thing, use Energize Boost in a completely different way. Doesn't bother me none, it's your game. Play it the way you want. Also, look at all these added enemies in this area, goodness. Hey, hang on a second, we gotta pull a few maneuvers. It's not too bad though. Okay, let's do, do this again for good measure. Now, it's going to be a little bit harder for us to maneuver that bomber in a way that we want, because they're heavy. There we go. Oh, man, his shields are back up, too. Man, he was, he was not nearly as affected by this as the fighter was. We can still disable them. Oop. Ah, there's the sealed container we were looking for. Okay. 
Okay. So I know that this question is going to come up, and I want to answer it right now because I'm actually really excited about this. Some people have been asking about the inertial dampeners, like your ability to drift. Is that going to be in this game? Yes, we have stated that drifting is going to be an element of this game. There have been a number of concerns about what that looks like and how you are enabling a drift. So let's talk about that. If you go to the options and then you go into something like your game and then you like click a toggle for drifting, I mean, that works, right? So then you go back into the game and you'd have drifting. So you'd, you'd boost and you'd start drifting and you could shoot sideways while you're still moving in another direction, etc., etc. But that type of accessibility kind of sucks, right? You're literally pausing the game to enable a mechanic that you might be readily using. So I can just straight up confirm that that's not the way we're going to do this. Instead, the way that we are approaching the drifting in Everspace 2 is a hot button toggle, boom, right as you're playing. So you can go from boosting, push a button, now you're drifting. That is how we are going to be implementing that. And it's coming together fairly well. There's still more details about what that's going to uh, do to the overall control scheme. Um, since we want to make sure that it's accessible to all types of controllers, right? And anytime that you add another button press, it can create a lot of issues in game dev, okay? Uh, you know, some people are surprised by it. It's like, what? It's just one more button. Yeah, but okay, you're right. But at the same time, look at this controller for a second and tell me how many buttons it has. <laughs> Where do you put a new button? So there's a lot of thought and consideration into the already thick levels of um, inputs that we have lined up for Everspace 2. Did you finally find good voice actors to replace that charming Microsoft robot voice? Michael, I don't know how much we're able to speak on who the voice actors are. I, I don't know. I don't know if we can clarify that, but just know that we do have voice actors lined up and um, I mean, shoot, it was in our post. We had, a, we had a post last week. Yeah, okay, so in Kickstarter, we have a, a second update to why we move things around, and then we also had a, a fun outtake of voice acting in the works. And if you've got a keen ear, you might know the voice of the character in that clip. Here's an interesting question. The question is, are you guys taking on too much crunch wise? Um, what a very particular question. What I will say to that is that whenever we go into a grand project, like a video game, like the construction of the whole thing from the beginning to end, we line everything up from the very beginning. Okay. Now, obviously plans change. Other things happen. Sometimes you get bullied around. Sometimes things move forward. Some things get removed entirely. Like there's a lot that happens in game dev. This is very Thanks common over. practice. Thank you. But at the end of the day, um, we want to make sure that we aren't doing anything that's going to hurt the members of Rockfish, right? So it's, it's not like we're gonna, you know, if we're really passionate about something, it's like, hey, I'm gonna work on a weekend to go complete this task. Sure, why not? That's not necessarily a problem, but it's not crunch in the sense of this has to be done on this day to do this particular thing. Like it, it there's so many factors there. It's 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 not really I wouldn't be concerned. <laughs> we make sure that everybody here is happy and healthy, and if they're not, we have a conversation. That's what happens. That's what happens. As should be the norm. All right, let's go ahead and sell some of these items. Maybe we have something that's better. No, it doesn't look like it. We do have all level 10 equipment, so I do want this rocket launcher, however. I do like that. Hold on.
Well, that's just straight better. Give me that mine launcher, please. And you can see as I'm comparing these items back and forth, I'm all I'm really looking at are the bonus modifiers. So here, for example, this cargo unit that I'm looking at has plus 10% boost speed as opposed to the one that I currently have, which is giving 46 more structure. Structure is an attribute of the ship. Um, I'm actually gonna take the boost speed over the structure. So we're gonna go ahead and sell this other one. Don't need the coil gun. Nanobots large, we'll stack these. Um, I've also kind of hinted at this as well. Um, consumables that we currently have and the game plan thereof. I'd keep your eyes on something like this. Um, there, we've had some pretty good discussion about how the systems of the ship need to operate in tandem. And I think some things, you know, like as you're working through game dev, there's certain things that you love and there's certain things that are like, yeah, we could do better or we could adjust this, you know? I mean, it's again, traditional processes and uh, we've got some thoughts on consumables. Okay, so now we've taken care of that. We've got this search and destroy mission. We're gonna track this bad boy. And after this, we can, uh, we can go to like a small location and complete one of those tasks as well. Or we could fly around and do unknown signals. <laughs> Do you plan to add support Steam Workshop? So mod support is something that a lot of people have been asking about, and frankly, it's very high on our wish list. It is, it's incredibly high, but as a priority, it's super low. Uh, what does that mean? That means that we are hard at work on a lot of other pieces of content to add to the game, um, because mod support um, has less weight if there's not a lot of things to okay. change. Buckle up. <laughs> right? So we'll see what happens in the future. Um, it's so hard to say it's going to happen or it's not going to happen because we want it to. We just have to see how things go. So we'll see. Has the entire story arc for the Everspace universe been written or are you creating it as you make the Everspace games? So um, this is also something a, a pretty common trait to do, at least I think it is. Um, is to flesh out a story, at least in a very general sense, before you even start going into like the hard coding of a game, right? Because if you don't have a story and you only have like a gameplay idea, sometimes that can, that can make a story very lackluster. It can make it uninteresting. It can overall hurt the gameplay experience for some players, especially those who are narrative driven. So for us, we, we had a general story arc that we wanted to pursue forward after the events of Everspace 1. And then once we established what that looks like, then we're like, okay, let's, let's bring this to fruition. This is actually a really strong talking point I wanna address right now. So you'll just, you'll notice right here that this outlaw detonator drone is outside of the territory that I can currently move. This is a bug, it's a very known bug. Uh, this will be modified. Uh, we've got some solutions to the borders of the areas that you are flying around in. So when you run into a situation where you have to eliminate a target that's outside of the playing area, um, that simply won't happen. Well, it's not going to be a possibility. So just know that this this will be addressed. Otherwise, he's coming towards me, so I'm gonna wait for him to get here. Will multi-screens be supported? Yes. I believe as of right now, they are even supported, but um, but obviously there's still more work to be had there. Uh, we have one individual in particular who's been- um, Station. I finished the job. Affirming your signature. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Excellent. So, but no, we, uh, we already have an individual who's looking at like a multi-screen support process and complains a lot to us about how it's working or how it's not working. And we are taking little notes here and there. So we are gonna have um, that side of things as well. Um, and track IR support. Thank you, Michael, for addressing that as well. Very good, very good. Okay, so now we've completed a couple of those missions. Let's pop over to our data tab and see how we are moving up. So trading, we're getting closer to this little pip here. When we reach that pip, we would be given the trusted status and a bunch of resources, okay? 
<clears throat> right now in the beta, the only rewards whenever you complete these missions are basically more resources. It's placeholder. Know that there will be more added here. But for now, we're going to go ahead and claim this reward. We got a railgun and an energy core. As we keep moving up through the ranks. Defense is normally geared towards equipment that is uh, like artillery, you know, uh, armaments, you know, laser beams. Trading's usually going to give you something pertaining to storage, resources. Mining's going to be more like ores, crafting, you know, stuff like that. Um, so each one of the foundations of these sub-factions provides something unique from that faction right and you may have also noticed that like the job types themselves show you unique opportunities that you can complete for them so you're not going to do gmb training for example and clear out minefields they they don't care about minefields but gmb defense does the trading wants you to go acquire some goods they want you to move things around right there but so there's that definitive sort of stance and how those are fleshed out as well i kind of bounced around there a little bit but just thought it was a good point to mention Did the time change in America or did the stream start late? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. <laughs> daylight savings, or as I like to call it, daylight losings time. <laughs> it's a fickle beast, man. I'm sorry. It's not, but I didn't, I didn't decide on it, okay? <laughs> I'm just following how it works. Yeah, Morgan, talking about the enemies going out of range. Yeah, it's... It's a fickle beast sometimes. It's a fickle beast. We're pretty... We're quite happy with the results of Everspace 1, though. Like, not gonna lie. Um, really happy with how it's come together. I mean, sure, if we want to, like, go into the details and nitpick on things that could be changed, we could. But we're very satisfied with those results. And our focus right now is entirely on Everspace 2. If we were to go back and revisit Everspace 1 and, you know, make these little minor tweaks here and there that basically nobody would notice except for like this very small number of players, it's just, you know, we have to pick and choose our battles, right? And right now our focus is here. So that's the direction we're moving forward with. But yeah. Now I have a smudge on my screen. Oh my gosh. You crazy. So I see that there's a couple questions pertaining to lore, so I wanna I wanna see this really quick. Um Will it be possible to buy bribes and stuff like in Freelancer? Okay, using Freelancer as a comparison. Um, I mean T3 Cube, there's a lot of different jobs that we haven't shown yet, um, and there's a lot of interactions that players will be able to make in the future that we just haven't gotten to yet. Some of those things have been implemented, a lot of them haven't. Um I think it's I like the concept of that, but at the same time, we don't want to get too detail-oriented inside of the reputation trackers, right? Like, this isn't... We're not trying to make this game where it's like you're you're vying for power and, like, moving faction territories around and, like, you're constructing bases and it's like a, it's like a strategy game almost at that point. And instead, uh, the focus is very much on looting and shooting and building yourself up. It's the story of this clone character that you are... Uh, embracing, right? That you are developing and learning what it means to be human, to have your own personality, to have your own uh, emotions, to have your own friendships, relationships. Um, that's really the focal point of the game. And through that, you're customizing your spaceship, right? You're customizing um, your, your actions that you're performing here uh, to suit your own needs. It's not so much where we want it to be really crazy with like 50,000 different types of reputation trackers and certain interactions that you can take with certain ones and creating like there's we don't want a spreadsheet with how you have to navigate these systems so we're just cutting to the chase and making sure the focus is very much 
Looty shooty go kabooey. That kind of sounded weird, but you get the point. Clones have to die to progress the story. Yeah, I mean, it. Yeah, it's it's fine that you're talking a little bit spoilery stuff about Everspace One. That's totally good. Um, but I will also say, um, no, I'm gonna let you guys figure it out. No, I'm not gonna say anything else. My lips are sealed. I can start streaming. Okay, good. That's excellent. Do you need to play Everspace 1 to understand the storyline of Everspace 2? We actually get this question a lot, Patrick. Um, and you know, honestly, like, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, you have to buy our first game. Mur, mur, mur. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be that guy. Um, I don't think anybody on our team would want to be that type of person. But what I will say is that if you're experiencing the story through another means, like if you're watching it posted on an online YouTube video, for example, or if you're talking to the community about the details to get caught up, I mean, that works from a story standpoint, but you're missing all of the components that come together that make the character's journey that brings them to the space of Everspace 2, right? Like, there are a lot of hidden details beyond just the story alone, and this is because we are, do a lot of world building, right? We're very passionate about our lore. So if you don't play Everspace 1 and you go into Everspace 2, even after having watched a video, yeah, sure, you'll you'll understand, but you're gonna miss a lot of those little nuances. You're gonna miss a lot of those added little details. So it's just kind of how you want to digest it. If you're excited about the story of Everspace 2, if you really wanna divulge yourself into the creation that is, I do encourage you to play Everspace 1, I do. If you're in it more for the gameplay experience and you're like, I don't know about a roguelike, Watch a catch-up video and play Everspace 2 only, you know? But I'm not your dad, so... <laughs> Do what you want! <laughs> Alright, let's pick up some more jobs. And then we'll fly around some more. Rootin' tootin' lootin' shootin'. Oh my gosh. I like that better. Hi! Says Magnus. Magna Muzz. Hello there. Welcome to the stream. A chameleon asking about other voice actors. We, we're pretty happy with the voice actors that we have uh, moving into Everspace 2 experience. And just so everybody is clear, all of the lines, all of the dialogue that you experience from these streams, they will be voice, voiced. Yes, they will be voiced. Both in English and German. Yeah, das ist sehr gut. Mm. Chip types are only fighters. So there is a focus on fighters, yes, but the type of fighters can range from a light fighter to a heavy fighter. Um, I, 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 know, I use this terminology because you guys get it. If we're using Star Wars as a base, it's like all the way down to the size of an A-Wing, all the way up to a Millennium Falcon. That's kind of your range of ships that you would choose as your star fighters. Um, and again, the focus here is it's a looter shooter, right? I'm starting to sound repetitive, but I, I need to make sure that you guys do understand this. I don't want you to think that this is some like super crazy uh, space sim galore where you can command battleships and massive fleets. No, that's no, no. <laughs> You control a fighter and you customize it to an extreme, to your to your liking. Oh my gosh, I started talking, I wanted to fly around. Let's pick up some jobs. Okay, picking up jobs, then we're gonna answer some questions. <laughs> Let's see, we've got some lost cargo here. Some lost cargo there. I'm gonna, I wanna try and find some lost cargo missions that could provide some opportunities. Let's see, item retrieval, we'll also go with that. We really want to go with the trading route. Acquisition of goods, small arms. Oh, I don't think we're going to find those. Solar panels, iron, diluted osnol. Now, wait a second. Hang on a second. We have, we have 16 
iron. Okay, so we can do this one. We'll take this one. It will drop off some iron. Beautiful. So now we can get on out of here. Let's also change the way that our ship looks. We'll just go random. What we got? Oh, that one kind of looks nice. I like it. Somebody's going, what just happened? What did he do? The ships have a modular design. So the wings, the cockpit, the body, and the engines are all different. They can be interchanged to create something new. So I'm still flying the exact same ship. Now it just looks different. All right. And there, there, like I said, there's a lot of customization for those of you who don't know. Native Linux support is planned at launch. Yes. I fell in love with Everspace and cannot wait to get into Everspace 2. Hey, I am glad that you are excited about it. Um, we will do our best to make sure that everything that you've experienced thus far and what you are hoping Everspace 2 becomes is actually what it becomes. Oh my goodness, Magnum Buzz. All caps, bro. <laughs> so ship, the, the main element in regarding that talking point. This is where the cargo should be. Is that the ship size varies pretty substantially. Okay. Um, those platforms that you just saw, they're actually quite large. They might not look it because I moved really quickly to get down there, but... Uh, yeah, they're they're large. Even this fighter that I'm flying itself, it's got some meat on it. It's uh, it's not this thin little piece of metal between space and my body. All right, let's see if we can find this bad boy. It's a search mission, so we have to. Oop! There it is. Found it. Blew right by it. There we go. We'll take that copper. Oh, yes. I love me some iron. Iron seems to be like one of those resources that can be kind of hard to find. But man, when you, when you do find it, it feels so good. At least with the current build because of how iron is utilized with establishing your perks in particular so that, that i always enjoy finding that pocket of iron day one linux support also isn't this more like armored core in space ah! i see it i see it um Kind of. <laughs> I think there's still some stark differences there. <laughs> Captain Richard. <laughs> there's not really any other game at the moment that I have high hopes for. Take your time and keep up the awesome work. Well, my goodness, Medicinal Assassin. That is a terrifying username, but I do appreciate that. I know the team, the team in fact appreciates that. We will continue to do our best. That is what we strive to do. And um, as you know, with how transparent we are, we, uh, if anything happens to come up and things get sidelined, we'll let you guys know. If we make great strides in the field of game dev, we'll let you guys know. Um, I'm always itching to show you the next thing. Like before all of these streams, like, at the, at the start of every week, I'm always, like, poking somebody on the team, like, hey, can I show this? And the answer is usually no, it's not ready. And that's because we're doing a lot. There's a lot of moving parts to bring this all together. But know that because I haven't been able to show you a lot lately is a good sign. <laughs> because that means we're going to be able to show a lot soonish. You are speaking to Nefty's station. I finished the job. Good. I want my payment. Signature is fine. Here you go. Calling Nefty's station. You are speaking to Nefty's station. I finished the job. Good. I want my payment. Signature is fine. Here you go. So some of you probably just noticed, wait, didn't he just say that twice? Well, yeah, I completed two jobs there. 
Um, and just know that this is also something we've noted. It's gonna be adjusted, work in progress. You know the drill, done and done. Okay, so let's go to our inventory. Let's see, is this a four stacker? It is. It's a four stacker, we're feeling good. Let's look at, let's look at the other ships over here. Maybe we wanna cycle over to like a striker or something. I don't know. Striker looks pretty neat, not one in particular. We also have interceptors, we can always bounce over. Interceptor does give us another weapon slot and a secondary slot, so that could be useful. Um, another striker design. I, I like this one a little bit more than the other one, I think. Yeah, I think I, I think I like the yellow one a little bit more. The front, the front, like, almost backwards engine look, I think is really effective. I really like the way it comes together, but I don't like this one with the engines that it got. And yes, I'm being particular about the way my ship looks. I hope that you will be too. Let's see, we've got the Sentinel. This one's nice. We kind of, we randomized one that was similar to this, I feel like. Another interceptor. A more simplified one. It's pretty similar to an interceptor of Everspace One. But note from a lore centric perspective, these are not colonial interceptors. These are not colonial interceptors. Some of you are like, oh, so we got the same ships from Everspace One coming into Everspace Two? No, no, they're not the same. They are modified variants. Because as you know, this is a demilitarized zone. There were a lot of war assets left over and there were people who pilfered the heck out of it. So they took what remained and built on top of that. So we could see something that has a colonial style to it for sure, but you're not getting those same colonial vessels back. And it also wouldn't make sense from a lore-centric perspective for our clone having done the tasks that he did in Everspace One to still be piloting the same ship that would be very easy to track him down in. Big brain play right there. All right. Let's see, I think, I kind of, hmm, hmm. I'm having a hard time decide on ships. Does somebody want me to purchase one of these specific ships? I'm kind of looking at this one and I like it. This interceptor right here. Nefty's station for 10 hours on YouTube, oh my God. In fairness, I do answer a lot of questions, but you're right. We'll get out of here. We'll do some stuff. Is painting your ship a thing? Sorry if this is a newbie question. It's fine. It's totally fine. We accept all newbie questions. We do these streams every Friday for newbies to walk in and be like, hey, uh, is this a video game? And that's totally fine. Um, so yeah, so ship painting is not a thing currently, um, but we uh, at the very least will have a selection of ship colors um, at some point. Who knows what that'll get implemented. Uh, but it's similar vein to Everspace One. If you're not familiar with Everspace One, you had a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary color that you could choose. So looking at this one, uh, it's kind of like the primary and tertiary colors of this one are both this metallic sort of uh, gray color. And then we have a, the highlight secondary color is orange. Now, in addition to that, there are also certain light colors, which um, there is a current bug right now, it's, you can't actually see them, but there's certain light colors that also are applicable to the ships. Let's just go ahead and buy this one. I'll kind of talk more about it. I think this fixed the graphical glitch. If it doesn't, we'll go to super light and I can show you there. But effectively, um, we do want to have aesthetic customization as an element here too. Uh, if you didn't have that as an ability, I think that could make things, um, less interesting from the standpoint of using a modular based system for the ships like we you we have to have some player agency here right like we want you to we want you to be in control of some aspects let's go ahead and do um another location let's go to this abandoned structure for example
There are respawn for items found in secret areas or should we wait for level 100 to get them high level? So we have, um, with, let's see, respawn items. So, as a looter shooter, because a lot of the equipment is randomized content, um, I don't think there's going to be a necessity for respawning items. But there will be specific items that can be found in specific places. So to that, I would say, if you can't pick something up, then, um, well, it's going to be found in like a container or something, so you would leave it in the container. So it wouldn't technically affect you in that instance. Also, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a quick thing. I'm gonna go to the menu, the main menu here, and then I'm gonna continue. I'm hoping this fixes a graphical issue because I want to show you a little bit more about the ship customization. And this graphical issue, it's it's been addressed as well. You know the drill with any sort of early access type of, of events. Sometimes they can just be a butt to you. Still not fixed. Okay. <clears throat> but you can see like the the highlights the 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 lights on the side of the ship here Let's get the Sun out of the way. You've got uh, this yellow color, right? So like if we changed the ship color over here now, it's blue Now obviously there's a different paint paint scheme on it as well, right? But we're just looking at the lights like we we want to have uh, Like here you can also see the front of the ship in particular like how these change around We want to have flavor to your ship we want you to taste the rainbow okay <laughs> what what do you mean that's that's a phrase used somewhere else ah, yes, whatever anyway man i forgot how much more maneuverable interceptors are from sentinels feels good all right so we have to find cloaked containers here and the way that this location works is that you have to listen carefully, and if you're quick to observe it, see where your sensors are pinpointing the location. So we're getting very close. Aha! Destructible debris, and look at that, a cloaked container, a reward, cybernetic implants, and a healthy number of credits, all right. We'll take it. That's one cloaked container. But there are more. Let's see if we can find it as well. A couple drones. I'm not too worried about it. Ooh. Getting something on my radar. Close. Well, I guess I got two things on my radar. Aha! I have found you. Dark matter, sensors, cargo unit, and a damage booster. Okay. So that's two. Now we got one left. Copper deposit. I'll take it. And again, this is a this is an event specific task. You don't have to do these tasks at all. If you do, you get a sense of satisfaction and usually some type of reward. So they're not just plugged in just to be existing. There is value in them. Because we want to make sure that you're not just flying around destroying enemies all the time. Like, yes, it's a focal point. But you should have some other opportunities as well. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> Boom. Ooh. Shield ST. Mm, we're gonna scrap it. But uh, I do like th I do like that. That's that's a pretty good shield. Otherwise, we're gonna take the scrap metal and a marksman beam laser. Okay. That should sell high enough for somewhere else. 
but now we have completed this local event. So we can move on to another location or pick up some more jobs. Oh, we also have a rigged asteroid. Oh, these are, these are fun. I'm gonna change out to third person though, because they're a little bit easier to do in third person. But the idea here is that they're already marked for destruction. You just have to uh, trigger all of the beacons on them, the detonators. And when you get them all in a timely fashion, the asteroid go boom, you collect resources. Excellent. There's a lot more stuff to collect here. We can actually leave this location and it will stay. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I've got like a full shipload. So I think I'm going to take this bat, bad boy back. Um, we'll go to a different station though. Um, what's a nearby station? We could go to Siren C. Because it's beautiful. Then we'll sell our goods there. Will Adam's sister be shown in Everspace 2? That is some spoiler territory, but uh, I'm assuming you know what happens in the events of Everspace 1, so that's probably going to answer that for you. Are the hitboxes of the ships going to change depending on the shape of the ships? Yes. In fact, they do. Date for early access version. Uh, January 2021. I don't know if we have a specific date. And if we do, it's not public yet. <laughs> All right, hang on a second. Let's just take a soak in this area. I really like this area. I just think it looks clean. We have this smoky atmosphere here. We can fly down into these these clouds, these puffs of smoke. But we do have to be careful, otherwise we'll just like ram into an asteroid or something. But there's a lot of debris in this area. Siren Sea. It's hard to see anything. Oh. Iron. Hello. And in case anybody is kind of wondering like, oh, well, all you have to do is not hide your HUD and you can see everything, right? Like that's no big deal. Well, sort of. If you are familiar with Everspace One, we had an environmental hazard whenever you were flying through uh, any type of nebula where your sensors were impaired. Now we haven't implemented those types of mechanics in Everspace Two yet. So we'll have to see we how that can before. impact you have or not. We? Yes, we have. Making sure that everyone's getting happy answers in the chat. Well, getting answers. I know sometimes we're not gonna be able to provide a happy answer. Let me be clear of that. I'm not here to try and make your day. I'm here to give you the facts, all right? Let's, let's just cut to the chase. All right, so, um, is it okay to make gameplay or YouTube? Um, yeah, do it. Just to affirm that even further. Um, you guys added the ability to turn off mouse acceleration yet? I don't believe so. We do recognize that there's there's a current issue right now. We had a report from somebody else uh, or a couple of people um, about mouse acceleration. That's just, it's just one of those constant in the process sort of things. Um, I know that there's a strong desire to navigate that. I know that we've made great strides in certain uh, controller fields. I have to word that so carefully. So it's it's kind of funny. There's there's some good things happening for if you're a mouse keyboard player, there's some good things happening if you're a controller player, if you're a HOTAS player. Like we're finding some solutions to some issues that have plagued us for some time. So just know that this is something we are constantly uh, deconstructing and reconstructing to ensure that it's the best fit for the game. This even includes something as simple as like the, the, the controller layout, right? Um, you guys have seen that change based off of the prototype version all the way into the beta. Like there have been 
some just foundational changes with some of those aspects. And we will continue to tweak and modify and ensure that you have the right settings to adjust to your liking. Eric spitting facts, oh my God. That area is cleaner than your green screen. Oh gosh, gosh dang it, freaking stop it. I gotta get that fixed. I gotta get that, I'm sorry. I gotta put like a weight on it. It's just that little bitty corner. Oh, it's so frustrating. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. Let's sell some stuff. Uh, go to the shop first. Maybe we can change, or we can add a weapon. This equalizer seems pretty good, actually. I'm just gonna pop that right now. So what is an equalizer, you might be wondering? Well, it's a type of coil gun. It's made by Federal Arms and Crafts as opposed to just a generic coil gun. Federal Arms and Crafts has their specific take on the coil gun, which means that it has uh, certain aspects or traits uh, applied to it that a traditional coil gun wouldn't have. Neat. We're gonna hang on to these resources because I, I want to. <clears throat> so here, um, a special that we got for it being uncommon is that 10% of the kinetic damage bypasses the shield. So that's kind of nice, especially since this weapon is balanced. Um, I think I actually sold a generic oil gun. Hang on, I wanna do a quick comparison. Did I not sell one? I thought I did. Oh, it's a rail gun. Well, here we go. Here we can compare these. So we have a Maverick Prime Zapper versus a Federal Arms and Crafts Prime Zapper. So you can see the difference between these two companies, albeit in a minor capacity here. Uh, but what you do, what you can note is that the energy consumption of the Maverick Prime Zapper is actually higher. And they've also uh, increased both the kinetic and energy damages with more towards the kinetic side. So if you wanted to have something that shoots harder, but also drains your energy reserves faster, you're probably gonna wanna go with Maverick in order to maximize those effects. Otherwise, Federal Arms and Crafts is fantastic for far more balanced approach using a coil gun as everything's pretty cut and dry straight down the line, boom. Oh, I lied, energy consumption on the Maverick Prime Zapper is less than the one on the Equalizer. What? Well, shoot, I'm just gonna hard replace. Just hard to replace that. Yeah, we want the Prime Zapper instead. Boom. I read it backwards. Silly me. Played the Aerospace 2 prototype and it felt really weird, weird and floaty compared to the first game. No idea if the acceleration was the issue. I will say this. That prototype is kind of dated. The demo is kind of dated. We uh, have made a lot of changes to the game space since that prototype, including, especially including, how the maneuverability is handled through the controller. A lot of changes. In fact, I will even, I will even be so bold to say this. With our prototype, I was a little skeptical about our controls at first because I felt like something was off. It just didn't feel right. And that might be the same feeling that you get. We have continued to push how the functionality of your controls affects the game experience. And we want to honor a very similar style, a very traditional style to what we offered in Everspace One. And again, I will say we have made some great strides in that department. So if you're a little skeptical about how the prototype feels, know that we've addressed it. That has been taken care of. Take out these drones and then we'll address some more questions if there's any. And we'll also probably show the gunship uh, shots that we showed last week, uh, just to catch everybody up. So if you missed those, we'll show them again. It's my treat. The gunship is definitely alive and well. Well, maybe not well, we're still working some kinks out. <laughs> but he's alive. <laughs> hidden base here. This is actually something we already destroyed, 
but we didn't complete a side mission, if I'm not mistaken. Because we have this energy core dispenser, but we don't know where this energy core needs to go. There are a lot of hidden little de whoops. There are a lot of hidden little details in our game world. Again, we can get away with this because it's handcrafted. Whoop! I'm a skilled pilot. Let me tell you what. Thankfully, we do have shields. So if you're really bad at flying, you have at least some basic protection from, uh, from being a dummy dum-dum. Whoop! <laughs> and I'm, I'm just making sure that you're aware of what that looks like, so this is a strong representation. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, how in the world did that not go in? Let's try that again. There we go. One. And two. There we go. Open slot. Rocket launcher. Noise. Okay, then. Let's see some more questions. Eric, are there sorting options in the shop? Yes. Yeah, we, we, we want to... We, 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 we... We want to make sure that you can filter through the things that you've purchased, the things that you desire. Um, there's a lot of different ways to sort it. I'm going actually right back here to show you what happens <laughs> when you uh, have shields, I guess. Um, so yeah, so with the inventory, all of a sudden I'm a terrible pilot. I don't know what's happening. Okay, anyway. But yeah, so here we you can cycle it by uh, value, by item type, by rarity, rebuy options, the ones that you sold. You can organize it like the same way your inventory is categorized or by a list so you can see the stats. All of these things are very beneficial to um, individuals who are being very particular about the equipment they have. And I hope that that's going to be you since it is in fact a looter shooter. Uh, if you're not particular about your loot, I'm questioning some things, but uh, it's fine. I'm a big fan of organizing by item type myself. So that way, if I'm like looking for something in particular, I can just go straight there. It's like, how many cargo unit options are there? One? Okay, that sucks. I'm going somewhere else. You know, whatever. Um, but otherwise, we're just gonna sell that. My goodness, that's almost better, but uh, it's not. I need a little bit of better loot here, but uh, we're not gonna worry about this stuff for now. But yeah, lots of sorting options. And I mean, also for the player ship itself, you can do your latest, your value, your item type by rarity, by amount. So like if by amount it puts 40, 34, 17, but by rarity, um, it changes things over because the iron's actually the least rare of this. Uh, by item type, they're all considered ores. So, or I guess crystal and ore, no, they're in the same category. Um, value, uh, it puts this one first because this sells for the most, 1,360. Whereas this is only 720 and this is only 255. And then by latest, obviously it's what you picked up first versus what has been picked up last. Keep your inventory nice and tidy. It's important. Are there any ships that fly better than others? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh! Only the best ship in the game. What's the best ship in the game, you might ask? Well, obviously it's the Scout. Um, and that's the true in both Everspace 1 and Everspace 2. It's not, it's not a false... I'm not biased or anything. It's 100%, 101% true, all right? But yes, I mean, different ships have different values pertaining to their ship and handling. Let me just, let me, let me see if I can do a thing. Let me try and, okay. I'm also gonna disable my webcam just to talk about this for one second. Look down here, right here, where my finger's pointing right there. Look right there. So basically we have ship speed and handling 
And this little space down below, you might be thinking, well, that's kind of oddly placed in conjunction with all the other stats. Don't worry, this is something that we're also evaluating and making sure that your information is placed correctly. So handling is this big item that for individuals like myself is very important, okay? So handling affects how well and how quickly you turn and spin. Whereas ship speed is how much your thrusters go vroom vroom, okay? So again, handling is how quickly you turn and spin and your speed is your boosty McBoosterson, okay? I hope that's very clear. Handling can change by the subtype of the ship, not simply by modifiers or even the entirety of the ship class, okay? In addition to that, you can also have equipment that changes your handling as well. Maybe I have one here, maybe, maybe, maybe. That would be really convenient if I had one here that showed an increase to handling, but I don't. Lame, but that's fine. You could find an item that increased your handling. Um, so yeah, so there is that. So there's, there's a lot of different factors that can really come into place here um, to change that factor, right? And that's like, there's also perks that could be available for you to choose that would change your handling as well. Maybe one from a companion that you meet in the future, one that we haven't showed yet. Maybe they are all about boosties. They love, they love that thrusties, right? And so they just wanna make sure that your engines, if you wanted to optimize it in a way to have more maneuverability, maybe there's gonna be a chance there. Um, so yeah, but just in a general rule of thumb, your light fighters handling is gonna be way better than a heavy fighter. Wait, ship speed is the non-boosting speed, right? Is there only when you boost? No, 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 there's, there's both ship speed and boost speed. So there are two different types of speeds. And I imagine that some of you are like, well, why isn't that distinguished here? You know, that's a good question. Maybe we will. Max level will be 30. It could be 30, it could be 50, it could be 75. It could be 100, it'd be 9,000. But what does that mean? What does that number, what does that number mean? As of right now, the number doesn't have too much weight associated with it. So I could tell you that it's going to be 100, but that doesn't really serve any purpose. There's nothing that really is constructive to how we discuss what that looks like, right? Aside from it giving you a perspective of grinding out the game. At the end of it all, what we are going to do is make sure that the leveling progression is according to uh, a valuable system of feedback. Feedback loops are a very real thing in games that have loot. If you are finding a bunch of stuff that you can never use, there's a problem. If you are finding a bunch of stuff that um, is way too good for where you're at, that's also actually a problem. If there's not a balance struck between enemy types and variety and abilities simply based on levels, that's also a problem. If you're fighting a level one scout versus a level 10 scout and the only difference between them are their stats, that's a problem. Like there's, there's a lot of different things that we take into consideration using this progression system. So that number shouldn't be the focal point. What's important is how far you have progressed yourself Aside from the only the only valuable thing with that number as of right now to really discuss is that it unlocks new perk opportunities. So level five, you get to choose one of these three perks and at level 10, you get to choose one of these. That's, that's basically the only functionality to the level as of right now. <laughs> that's, that's actually not true. That's, that's, I'm being, a little bit ridiculous, but but the point is, is that it doesn't matter what I would tell you what the level is right now. That's that's the point. We need to make sure that the leveling is meaningful and we are going to. Those clouds look sick. I know, right? I really enjoy how they come together. Another one of these guys. All right, let's give him some mines to deal with. That was a terrible throw. That was much better. Excellent. 
All right. See this this scene right here. This this actually gives me um, some significant Everspace One vibes because you have like a colonial derelict station almost with debris that's surrounding a larger asteroid that you can probably fly through. Maybe I don't know. Maybe not. While you're in like a nebula and you're trying to figure out what you can see and do, and you're scared, but you're not sure why, but it's because you're a bad flyer, uh, and then you realize something about your life and it builds you up. I don't know. But either way, this this right here, this, this is almost nostalgic for me. <laughs> and I'm really glad that we have these pockets where you're not actually sure if you're playing Everspace 1 or Everspace 2, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Number of systems planned. I was easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is what's in the quote unquote plan. Or maybe this is an illusion. Maybe we have more than that. We just don't want to reveal them. Or maybe there's only going to be one and we have seven too many to make you think we're making an incredible game, but we're going to shaft you all. No. <laughs> but know that this is more of the scope that we want to aim for with our products. We want to have a lot of variety in these locations, a lot of opportunities for you to obtain um, in diverse ways, right? Like we want you to have incredible jobs. We want you to have unique factions that you can come across to engage with, to benefit from. We want to have environments that wow you, why environments that scare you. We want to have um, we want to have resources that are also unique, creatures, right? We want to have uh, trade routes and and characters that you meet. Um, there's there's so much that's so important to why we have so many different locations. When you're flying to from Cedo to Union, I mean, a lot of people here can already say this, like. It's not just the different colored sun and that's it. It's not like we just changed the color palette. Like there are a lot of nuances and a lot of details that we're going through to make sure that each of these locations is very unique in what it offers the player. Hidden systems maybe? I mean, it's possible. Maybe there's one right here and if you zoom in really close, you can see it. You see it? But it's a work in progress. This map can change. I mean, I I don't think we would do this, but it's possible that like Zarkov could vanish and then a new location shows up over here. You know, who, who knows? It's possible. Not likely, but you get the drift. You get the drift. All right, let's see some questions from YouTube and we will uh, bring this out. Brian Massey regarding the level. Nice. Leveling for the sake of leveling has no purpose. It's true. Completely agree. When you found a cool new system in the space lounge of a blueprint in space, it was great. And the fact you guys are scaling that up makes it exciting. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that the content you find is meaningful. It's valuable. Is this when we'll encounter space whales? I never said a word about space whales in anything that I discussed. I guess I said critters. Okay, all right, I see where you're going. Um, there was concept art that was shown of a very massive creature. We'll just have to see how things go. Harpoons, ooh. Laser harpoons? You're onto something here. <laughs> no purple sun? Um, so fun fact, uh, our entire team, we hate the color purple. Just screw the color purple, it's an awful color. I'm just kidding, everyone calm down, goodness. No, we just don't have a purple star. But colors can change pretty easily. It's like, oh, we don't like that one. Mm, let's just click the slider, mm, pop, done. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, there is actually, there's there's some intentionality behind the color choices as well here. Um, if you are familiar with Everspace One, there's a color progression with where you're at in the DMZ. You need to go back and check this out. Like if you're in sector one, there's a distinct color. It's actually blue. What? What? Yeah, I know, crazy, right? And as you progress, those colors end up changing. So if you took a screenshot of Everspace One, you actually know which sector you're in. And we have that same mentality here. 
Um, and we also need to keep certain bits of lore intact as well. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, pertaining to the coloration of the stars that are shown in addition to just the aesthetics. So that's neat, that's fun. Michael is being more precise about the number systems because I got a little loopy there. So let me just read this off so everybody has a solid clarifying detail because this is important and I do think this is a good question. So Michael says, Michael's the big bad CEO in charge, by the way, so his word is gold. He says, to be precise regarding the number of star systems, we have to see how it goes over the course of about one year in early access. It might also turn out that eight systems is too much. We honestly don't know at the moment. So, realistically speaking, our plan, what we show here, I mean, obviously it would be really great for us to have eight entirely handcrafted unique star systems with about eight to 10 major points of interest and 15 to 20 minor points of interest. That's a lot of locations, okay? That's what we would desire for sure. And that's kind of what's more or less in that perceivable plan, but things change through development and we are not going to sacrifice the integrity of the game space. Um, if it means that we need to just adjust some of these figures around by uh, optimizing certain locations you can go to um, and maybe bring up a conversation down the line of saying, well, is that something that we could bring in later, you know? Um, but for now, yeah, I mean, we have some pretty bold ideas and how large the scope of the game. And this should give you a pretty general, a good idea of that. I mean, even just looking at a single location like this. And this provides a lot of players in the beta approximately eight to 10 hours of game time. Eight to 10 hours. Eight to 10 hours of a single location. Approximately. So hopefully this is all kind of building um, the expectation you should have uh, pertaining to what to expect. And I also just want to make sure that you guys know kind of what our vision is here. It's a good discussion point. Can you upgrade the level of an item you like? Magnemuts, um... So we talked about crafting last week. We haven't gone into the specifics of it, but I will say this. We absolutely want to make sure that you can utilize the equipment that you are fond of, um, be it through a number of different craftable, modifiable, upgradable means, okay? We also want to make sure that there are limitations in place where you can't exploit certain systems, for example. So we're being very careful on that approach for crafting. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, though. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, that was a lot of talking. I want to I want to go do stuff now. Let's um. Let's see if we can complete this. Oh, we have eight minutes left in the stream. Goodness gravy, time flies. Time has flown so fast. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Union Bridge. We're gonna try and finish this up, but we'll keep answering questions. Is it already possible to go in Union? No is the official response. It is not possible to go to Union. We have a dev build, which has allowed us to show certain locations that are a work in progress. Union will be available in early access. I know I'm getting to some of these questions really late, so thank you for your patience as I answer them. Also, uh, just a big shout out again to uh, Michael, the CEO who is joining you in these streams. Guys, how often, how often do you go into a Twitch chat where the CEO of a game that you're looking forward to is present with you? How often? If that answer is more than one, um, wow, I'm impressed. But seriously, so so thank you, Michael, for being here for the community. I think that means a lot. It should mean a lot to you guys. <laughs> Pretty huge. Um, and also other members of uh, very sp key individuals of the community really do appreciate that uh, and being present to help answer questions. Those of you who 
are in the know about more things that come together. That station doesn't look abandoned to me. How many are there? Five. One of them is a pretty nasty viper. I knew it. Don't let them get away. So we got this little mission where we have to take out these big baddies. But we have overleveled ourselves. Traditionally, you would do this mission earlier in the game. And we don't have a system in place that would scale up the missions yet. What does he mean by that? That sounds like a talking point. Maybe it is. But for now, what you can see is my overpowered abilities. Got four, but the Viper jumped out. Is the package still there? Taking care of business. All right. So now we need to look for a package that's hidden nearby and uh, fly into things, I guess. And we don't Can't find anything. Find it anywhere. What ship types did the group fly? Apart from that elite Viper, there were a scout, two madcaps, and a sniper drone. Just as I thought. I hate those guys. They had pestered me to sell them the wares, but I turned them down. They didn't happen to have left their address, did they? The Viper pilot is its slayer in Roger Orbit. I would be very grateful if you could get my package back. This will cost you. How about a raise up to 3.5k? Sounds fair. I'm on it. So, also a fun little fact. This station that's right in front of me is actually alive and well in the prototype. Then we updated to Alpha and we destroyed it. <laughs> Maybe there's some foreshadowing there? Hmm. I'll let you wonder about that one. <clears throat> if your word is law, can you tell my boss I need a week off for the Everspace 2 launch? I'm not sure that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I think co-op is cool, but single-player games are usually better than multi because they rely on content over friends being the content. Um, Brighton, Massey, I think that you have uh, a strong desire of what you know you want. I said that funny. You know what you want. That's what I'm trying to say. You know that what you desire in a game is going to be more of a single-player game. And that's awesome because that's what we're making. We are dedicated to a single player game. Yeah, there could be some really excellent assets of making this into some sort of co-op game. That's just not what we're doing. That's not what we desire to do. It's not the direction uh, that we want to take it. It would also fundamentally change the narrative that's taking place as well. So we'd have to, it would be like, we'd have to recreate the entire game by making it a co-op. Not even joking, like it's, it's sincerely. Some people were like, oh yeah, you just split the screen down the middle and you let somebody else play. That's, n no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Unfortunately, if it was that easy, oh man, if only. But yeah, so I'm glad that you know what you want. I think that's awesome. And we do, we're like in line, we have the same mentality. We really think that uh, this type of game is far more focused in a single player environment than a multiplayer one. Excellent. We have just a couple more minutes, so if you guys have any more quick questions, I implore you to shoot them right now. Right now, right now. Ow. <laughs> wow, that actually really hurt. I think I popped a knuckle when I did that. Whew. Okay, anyway. No worries, I'll just go to the ER after the stream. Jeez! <laughs> wow. Careful, old man, right? Oh wait, we're going to a we're going to a job. We want to go to this mission. How did that happen? Oh, we're not tracking the right thing. Silly me. Silly me. Oh my gosh, wrong button. Don't worry about that. Dev's got a dev during these streams. Come on now. And if one of you's like, oh my gosh, I gotta go back and take a screenshot and, and, and like learn all the things of what that just was. It's already been done, guys. You're not missing anything. It's not revealing any information. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna make sure you don't waste your time. People have already analyzed it. Just don't worry about it, seriously. 
All right, let's keep going. All I'm asking is, can I play? If you have a closed beta access, you certainly can. All that would require is being a Kickstarter backer and also um, being up to the tier of the standard game tier. We actually distributed the beta to all of the standard backers. What? And that's because we shifted around our early access timings. So it was kind of one of those uh, rocky situations where we wanted to give access to the Kickstarter backers who've been patiently waiting. Um, and I mean, I wish that we could, you know, distribute it to tons and tons of people, but there's a, a fine process there with the legalities of how things work, so we can't. But uh, yeah, the beta is available to all of the Kickstarter backers at the standard tier or higher now. So we gave it out early. So yeah. Uh, how many bugs did you encounter during the stream today? Uh, there have been a couple, but they're all known bugs. Like we've seen a lot of bugs through gameplay and um, I know that they come up from time to time. It's just, it's just one of those processes, especially with a game with a scope that we have. Did the try um, send you? You're gonna yeah. see a lot. Now don't make a fuss. Just return what you stole and I'll let you go. Never. Everyone says I am just like everyone else. But with this I will prove them wrong. I will finally stand out. Sigh. I warned you. Hey, it's me. Did the package contain some viridium paint by any chance? Yes, that's it. The recipient is already waiting for you at the outer rim. You know that viridium products are illegal. I'm sorry, but I'm not paying you so well to ask questions. Point taken. Magnumus saying, are there thoughts for gunship to be able to carry more than one sentry? If by sentry you are referring to drones, we haven't talked about what drones look like from a player perspective yet. That will be a conversation for another day. Because it's the end of the stream! Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully completed a two hour experience here of answering questions. I'm gonna spitball a couple more because I saw uh, one or two poked in there. Um, oh, it's actually the same question. Magnumus, you're on both sides. You're on YouTube and on uh, Twitch. You sneaky rascal, I love it. That's great. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let me see, I'm making sure. Michael did have a statement regarding multiplayer, so I wanna read this through very quickly as well. I wanna make sure I don't damage my hands in the process. Here we go. Big fan of Destiny 2 myself, so having a similar co-op experience with friends in Everspace 2 would be dope, but we simply don't have the budget for that and it would add years to the production. We even would have to rewrite all gameplay code from scratch, so no. As I previously mentioned, it would be like making a new game. There you have it from the mouth of the CEO or from the from the keyboard of, you know what I mean? Excellent, perfect. Guys, I really do appreciate your time and attention here in these streams. Like it's always a blast. Also note that if this wasn't enough for you and you want more, you crave the data. You wanna stay up to date with all of our streams and any info drops, I encourage you to go to our Discord to join and sync up on our YouTube where we do drop additional videos from time to time. Get on the Twitch when we make live updates. See your photos that you've taken through Instagram. We repost your stuff all the time. So you guys are really good at taking photography. Oh my gosh. We've got Reddit. That's right, we got a Reddit sub uh, subreddit. We don't have a Reddit, we have a subreddit. You get it. Oh my goodness, there's so many sites and places that you can go that uh, there's no reason for you to not be informed. Um, and also you're gonna see a lot of info drops first through the Discord. I'm just saying this through my own experience and how we kind of navigate our uh, line of information, uh, like how everything's distributed. So I really do encourage you to be a part of the Discord. You can also have various conversations with other members of the community there. You know how Discord works, why am I telling you that? Oh my gosh, you get it. It's beautiful, it's perfect, it's amazing. You know what else is beautiful, perfect, and amazing? You are, oh my gosh, woo! But no, seriously, you guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome, and I will catch you in the next stream. Toodles! I seem to have missed a couple questions in the chats. I encourage you 
to go to the Discord and use the channel called Ask Questions. From there, one of our associates will be standing by to respond to you. Thank you for your time. Selling some Orag slaves by chance? 